so as mentioned previously one of the first things I'm going to look to do is just practice and get comfortable working with this aluminium plate. I've shown you in the previous video I have this pillar drill here as I said there it's um, nothing too fancy it's 375 watts of power which is just enough to work with aluminium with the type of bits we'll be using you wouldn't want to go any lower than that and if you can afford it go higher and it'll serve you for other projects as well like working with steel and that, that type of thing so I have a handful of bits down here that I'll run through in a second and I'll talk to you about what they're for what they're called in case you need to buy similar type of bits yourself I've tried to set this up here in a manageable way because one thing I'll say to you after practicing on a couple of holes here this is a very messy process particularly because one of the things you need to do is use a drilling fluid and uh, this is an oil in this case called molly slip and uh, that one it increases the longevity of your bits and two on a lower power machine like this it makes that kind of workload more manageable and you just need to take your time go slowly you don't ram that thing down like it's a piece of wood you know you have to go you have to be gentle and take your time now that we have a close up here of these parts I'll sort of run through some of the bits you might need in order to drill out and tap some of these holes and how you can do that comfortably with a simple pillar drill and some home workshop tools. As I mentioned in the previous video I'm using three bolt sizes which is M8 as you can see here it's quite a large bolt. We got M6 and M5. For each type of bolt we have different bits and what I've got here is obviously a standard steel drill bit in this case this is a 7.5 so even though this is an 8 millimeter bolt you always want to go below that to drill your hole because we need to tap the thread if you go through with an 8 mil bit there won't be anything left for you to thread because you will have taken it out so this is just an allen key or an allen wrench obviously to tighten the bolt I've tried to be as organized as I can here because as I said using the pillar drill makes such a mess that you don't want to be constantly rummaging around your workshop with oily hands trying to find bits so everything I need I've prepared beforehand which you can see clearly here so there we go again from the top so we've got the allen wrench for each of these you can see I've got the same tool so we've got the M8 allen wrench the M6 and the M5 same for the bits, we've got a 7.5mm drill bit, a 5.5mm drill bit and a 45 for the M5. Correspondingly we've got the tap, the M8 tap, which will allow us to create a thread in the aluminium. We've got the M6 tap here as well. And we've also got the M5 tap, which is a little bit smaller. Finally we've got this bit, which is a counter bore bit which essentially creates this head here. That allows the cap head of the bolt, this is called a cap head bolt, so the head of that bolt will sit below the surface and I can demonstrate that for you with a piece that I've already played around with. So you can see it goes all the way down and is then flush with the surface of the aluminium as you can see there. And that just allows for nicer parts, particularly when parts need to rest face down like this and you don't want the whole machine resting on the head of the bolt, so you want it to be resting on the actual base of the aluminium. So that kind of covers the bits here. It's typically hard to buy these individually or it'll be more costly generally. So in this case for example I bought a uh, a large bit set and these are all steel and you can see there's a huge collection so we've got 13 here all the way down goes right through to um, 5.2 right down to 1 so it steps up in 0.5s which is a great little set it'll cover you for most of your needs particularly on a small uh, drill press like this one because the bigger you go you end up needing a larger chuck anyway in the drill and you're going to need more power to do that kind of drilling regardless. There's a few other bits that are worth mentioning before I 
have a go here and show some demonstrations. There's the potential that these type of bits could be useful. These are step down bits on a lower power machine like this one. Typically these are handy for sheet metal uh, but you can use them in thinner parts of aluminium even when you want to drill a really large hole. What happens is you sort of step your way through the different bit sizes. So this part here is 32 mil diameter. If you were to drill that straight out on the small drill you'd struggle. It'd probably lock up. But what you can do is step through the bits and make your way up to that size, which reduces the load on the drill, so they may be handy. There are also some smaller variants of this, which you can use. Another thing that's particularly useful are countersink bits like these. So if I just pull the large one out, what this will do is allow you to, I don't know if you can see on the smaller holes here, Typically when you drill a hole, the bottom end or the top end can start to look a little bit ugly in the sense that you might have some burrs there. So a bit like this, you can use to eliminate that. So that hole there, for example, if I just try it with my bare hands here, even just doing that with my hand, you can see there, it's put a little chamfer on the edge and really cleaned that up. So you can imagine that even on like the pillar drill, if it's perfectly straight and you do that nicely and, and gently, you get a really nice chamfer on the edge there. Also handy for countersunk screws of course, but we're not going to be using any of those in this case. Again, these generally come in a set as you can see there, and they're not too expensive. I would always recommend any of your parts when you work with metal, buy steel, tungsten steel if you can afford it. In the case of the taps here, I bought myself a very nice draper tap and die kit and you can see here just by looking at the tool that comes with it it's a heavy duty one um, it was quite expensive but it's tungsten steel and as long as you use a decent amount of oil when you're doing this these bits will last you for life there's a lifetime warranty with those and that's the type of thing you want with aluminium you're probably safe because it's quite a soft metal generally However, if you're using these on steel regularly, you'll want to make sure that they're really good quality. Otherwise, you'll just burn out the bit and you'll get poor threads. Same story with the drill bits. Buy good quality and they last you a long time. The other thing that's extremely useful, as I mentioned before, is this punch. What I tend to do with the punch is you take your piece of aluminium like this, so you measure out your hole of where you want to drill. And rather than just come straight down on it with a drill bit, like this for example, if I was to take this, if I were to mark out a position on here and to take the drill press straight to it, generally what will happen is before it starts digging in, it'll slide around a little bit and it's really hard to get an accurate hole that way. Typically you see the wood drill bits get around this with a little point on the end of them, right? Because you can line that up and it goes straight in. On metal that's not the case but what you can do is you can create a guide hole on the aluminium using a punch I'll show you here I'll give you a little demonstration so again if I zoom in so I'll just pop a hole there so let's say I measure the hole there you can see there's no mark on it at the moment if I just give it a light tap you can see what that's done there is it's put a little mark right there and now what would happen is when you come down with your drill bit that hole will guide the drill bit ensuring that your hole is exactly where you want it to be so i definitely recommend getting that another thing you might find useful in this process is something called a scribe these are an easy way to make markings on metal rather than trying to draw on it with a pen or a pencil you know that's going to have inaccuracies due to the thickness of the pen in the first place and it wipes off so something like this what it allows you to do is to scrape into the aluminium or steel or whatever you're using and it allows you to just measure up nice straight guidelines for your hole drilling and the other thing is a deburring tool if you're drilling larger holes generally these are useful for example if you're drilling a 50 mil hole in something like this in that case it'd be hard to get a countersink bit big enough to 
do a, um, a nice chamfer on the edge of that. So you could take a tool like this and just scrape your way around the edge. Hopefully that was a decent overview of the parts I'm using here. If you've got any questions at all, please just leave a comment below and I'll clear that up for you. Um, as I said, I'll leave links to the parts that I've used in the description. And now what I'll do is I'll do some hole drilling here. I'll record everything and do some demonstrations.